Okay, so I'm here with another spontaneous symmetry breaking problem. This time I'll work through the case of SU3 Yang Mills theory with the Higgs field transforming in the fundamental representation. The required Lagrangian density is, of course, this. Note that because I'm writing everything in index notation, I didn't need to use the Hermitian conjugate dagger in writing the Lagrangian. Now, you may have noticed the lambda matrices and the covariant derivatives. I'm going to take those to be the Galman matrices in this video because those are standard for SU3, which means the generators, as they're often defined, are the Galman matrices over 2, although technically the infinitesimal generators are actually i times that, but you know what I mean. With this Lagrangian, we have the usual situation of a Higgs field that acquires a non-zero vacuum expectation value at low energy, causing the theory to require reparameterization to regain manifest physicality. Specifically, we must expand the theory around a new physical vacuum. The standard and simplest vacuum selection is this. Before we actually proceed with the calculation of the spontaneously broken Lagrangian density, it's interesting to predict what will happen using Goldstone's theorem. We see that there are five fields set equal to zero in the standard vacuum solution. We therefore expect five broken generators, and from the associated Nambia Goldstone bosons, five massive vector fields in the spontaneously broken Lagrangian density. Now let's actually calculate the spontaneously broken Lagrangian density and show that Goldstone's theorem has predicted correctly. From this expression that we have here for the new vacuum about which we want to expand the theory, we can see that the complete set of linearly independent generators that annihilate it are the ones proportional to the first three Gelman matrices. Therefore, it's symmetric under the gauge transformations generated by that subset of generators, and not invariant under the other gauge transformations. Notice that the Galman matrices that annihilate the vacuum consist of the Pauli matrices substituted into the upper left corner of 3 by 3 matrices of zeros. We therefore see that the vacuum is SU2 symmetric and expect that the spontaneously broken theory will be SU2 symmetric as well. Based on all of this, the standard reparameterization for expanding around the new vacuum takes on this form, and the gauge transformation that absorbs the Namebu Goldstone bosons into some of the vector fields takes on this form. Because the original Lagrangian is gauge invariant, we can obtain the spontaneously broken Lagrangian density in the unitary gauge simply by inserting the gauge transformed scalar field reparameterization into the Lagrangian density that we started with. This leaves us with this. From here, I'm going to start by computing the spontaneously broken derivative term. The first step is to expand out the i index sum and then simplify. The next step is to expand out the a and b sums, inserting the generator component values and then simplifying again. At this point, it's useful to introduce this sum to manage the repetitive terms. The next step is to evaluate the squares. We can then reorganize to clearly reveal the vector boson mass terms. Inserting this back into the Lagrangian gives us this. The last task is to simplify the potential term. Expanding out the powers and refactoring gives us this. Constant shifts don't matter in the Lagrangian density and can be ignored. That leaves us with this. We can then eliminate the linear term by inserting the value of v. Inserting this simplified potential term back in produces this final spontaneously broken Lagrangian density. It's easier to see what's going on in this Lagrangian density if we make these substitutions and break it up. Now we can clearly see that we have an SU2 symmetric Lagrangian density with five massive vector boson fields and three massless ones, where the three massless ones sustain the residual SU2 gauge symmetry. All of this is exactly as expected given our predictions from Goldstone's theorem. And with that, we're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, or at least found it interesting. If you did, please consider sharing it with a friend, giving it a thumbs up, and subscribing.